Welcome back to part three of our online worship Q&A. And we really hope that you have been blessed by part one and part two. But I believe the Lord has reserved the best for last in part three. So uh, we hope that you can even grab, the, grab a loved one or a friend to, to watch this with you and to take, to take the final leg of this journey together. So we pray you'll be mightily, mightily blessed um, by this last section. Um, the next question is from, it's from the USA. And it says, what are the most important parts of the worship service? What are the most important parts of the worship service? Fire away. Well, it's um, isn't it what you've always talked about? We everything we do is for the last fifteen minutes of of our meetings, and that's the prayer ministry. That's where people get healed and delivered, and God touches people and moves. Um, of course, there's there's moments throughout the service that you know God can move on people. But um, the most important part definitely is is the prayer ministry, the, the call to salvation, the call to repentance. Mm. What do we do this for if it's not to bring souls into the kingdom? There's, yeah. n there's n literally no other purpose to what we do. We're missionaries on a mission to win souls for the kingdom of God. Mm. That's true. All right, what do you think? No, I agree. I agree with what, what he said there. Um, you know, and it's... The whole service, you, you want to create an atmosphere where that can happen. That's the, you want you want to um, kind of have encapsulate that atmosphere of heaven. That's yeah. that's what your, that's what our aim is. That's what our, our goal is. Anybody who's a worship leader, it's not, uh, well, I've got 30 minutes on a Sunday and, and I'm better just fill some time in because, um, well, 30 minutes, how many songs? Yeah, get all this, get the song list in. It's a. It's about having that atmosphere of having having people being able to connect with God. Because when people are able to connect with God, all these things can happen. People can get saved. People can be delivered. People can be healed. We've had people healed in our meetings during the very lively praise um, praise parts or during the quieter worship parts. Um, so you know that it's that just that the whole focus of what you're doing is to create that atmosphere of heaven so people can be changed. Mm. you want to add to that? Uh, I was just thinking while you were saying that um, while you are in worship, it's a bit of a surgery that happens, uh, a divine surgery. The Lord is uh, healing, he's taking out, he's cutting out some stuff, he's putting back together some things. Um, there's a cleansing as well. Um, so many people afterwards have said it feels like I was washed. I was just being washed wave after wave of cleansing. Um, and that's where purity comes in in worship, isn't it? There's a washing clean. By the end of the service, you're so saturated in the anointing that you just respond to salvation or respond to the call for being a, a missionary uh, you know respond to your calling and and uh, for unity to take place that is the beauty of worship it's the beauty of worship it's the beauty of the anointing it's not just singing songs it's bringing the presence and the yeah. glory and the manifest presence of the Most High God coming in like a cloud of glory and just, uh, s s you know, cleansing and, and s being a surgeon with his scalpels. With yeah. his, it doesn't hurt. It just brings healing. Yeah. Well, on that, on that point, I might even have to kind of, I might retract some of what I've said because there was a, there's a great, um, man of God who said, you know, the entire point of missions is, is because there are people who don't worship. So, I, yeah, maybe the most important part of our meeting is the worship um, because that's where people do enter into the presence. And the whole point of missions is to bring people to worship. So yeah. um, just to retract a little bit. And worship is the act of just um, its worthiness. You know, you, you're telling God that he is worthy. Worship is the act of exalting God of allowing of changing your thoughts from where you're at and your circumstance and your situation and you start to focus on God who God is at uh, the greatness of God and and that that changes everything so that changes you as an individual but it also changes the atmosphere and changes the people that are there yeah 
the the heart of worship is is where your heart is at you know where we said god's more concerned about your heart than anything else you know and everything in the service is 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 worship you know even as we said a giving um is worship you know everything um is worship but uh, i also agree Zach. Like, you're not wrong in saying yes i think as far as you know that's if you would not not that one is <clears throat> excuse me more important than the other but let's say that is, I think what you're touching on, it. that is really kind of the heart of what we do. And, you know, Jesus, that's that's the, the heart. When Jesus says, go out, you know, go to the nations, teach them, baptize them, you know, to the, the heart for the lost, you know, that's almost like that's the heart of it. But as you rightfully said, yes, I think it is, um, you know, uh, in a worship service to answer your question, uh, we hopefully that, that uh, you feel satisfied with the answer. But, yeah, it's it, it's all important important but the heart i think is the most important of it all and your relationship with god all right then there's a question from kenya a very good question that says how do i keep the worship fire and anointing burning very good question christoph do you want to start us off with that one how do i keep how do i keep the worship fire and anointing burning like in your own life how do you keep how how does how do you know, not to let the fire go out. How do you keep the fire of worship going out? Well, I think, you know, we're all human. And um, there's times when you really don't want to worship. But there's times when you really don't feel like God is... Or you're praying and you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling and coming back down. And then, you know, you're the worship leader in the church and you've got to go up and lead worship. <laughs> and you just feel like, listen, I need to be ministered to. But, but, but in the... It, so, but so in in that case, I mean, many times when I've had to lead worship in my church, and I was going through difficult times, um, things that I wasn't able to speak to people about, things that people didn't really know about, financial difficulty, all sorts of stuff. And you know, you've got to lead this whole congregation now in worship, and um, God has a grace. So even if you haven't kept the fire burning in the week, as you should have, maybe you didn't really pray. Maybe you didn't really read the Bible. But God's grace, as you know, God, not that you just come and you come intentionally um, unprepared. Um, you don't come intentionally unprepared, but there are some times when you're going through a dry season. And in the midst of that dry season, you still just, you just operate in faith. And faith is simply believing that God is knowing who he is, believing that he's the reward of those that seek him and that you'll just, you just go forward in faith. God, I don't feel it. I, I really feel nothing right now. I don't feel like anything's going on. I feel like there's no fire burning, but God, I'm still going to worship you. God, I'm going to praise you. And, and that is sometimes a step of faith you have to take. Uh, there's times when you're really on fire and everything's okay. So we, you know, we all go through different ebbs, you know, things ebb and flow in our lives. There's times when we really, we can really give out, and there's times when we, we need to be ministered yeah. to. Um, but it, you know, if you're a worship leader and uh, you know, and, and maybe you have to be on stage during those times when you're not on fire, trust the Lord. When those times when you are on fire, trust the Lord. In every season of your life, trust the Lord. You know, it said that, you know, that, you know, you're like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that will bring forth fruit in due season. So that means even in the time of drought, even in the time of lack, even in the time of nothingness, keep yourself planted, knowing who God is. Have a relationship with God where you know who he is so that even when you don't do things that you should do to enhance your spiritual life, God will continue to maintain you. Did you want to add something? Well, I, I think one of the greatest things of keeping that purity, uh, keeping that fire is purity in your life. Purity is the greatest magnet for the anointing. And when Jesus approached the woman at the well, to me it's funny that she was a prostitute, that the Lord would speak to her about worshiping in spirit and in truth and that he's looking for worshipers in spirit and in truth and he was a, talking to a prostitute that's who she was she she had a lot of men in her life and um it's interesting how he would um bring out uh, talk to someone who was struggling with impurity and um in exchange for her very 
measly um, water that she could give him that could satisfy him for maybe just an hour or two. In exchange for that, he gave her living water or offered her living water. And when we worship, as I explained earlier, there's such a cleansing and, and it's because of the pure living water that flows when we worship. It flows from our bellies, as the word says. And when you just tap into running after purity in your life, a creating a life of purity, drawing a line to say, Lord, help me to run away from pornography, run away from any impure thoughts or any sexual immorality, which is, by the way, one, is one of the very key ingredients in a worship team that we deal with in many cases, um, is sexual impurity. Many times when we've ministered to different worship teams, there's been great problems in the sexual immorality area of the worship team. I've prayed for ladies who have gone through abortion and who have not told their worship team leader and who have just carried on singing in the worship team. That is a massive subject that I'm touching on right now, but I feel um, that there is a reason why the Lord describes in the word about fire. And when you are under fire, the dross lifts to the top and he can clear it off and you can have that pure gold, isn't it? Um, that also happens. So you're asking, how can I keep the fire burning? Um, allow him to burn you so that that dross can lift up so that he can wipe off the impurities and strive after purity. So Lord, um, the pure in heart shall see God, Matthew 5 verse 8. The pure in heart shall see God. If you want to see God in your worship, if you want to see God move and bring healing and bring change and bring restoration to the people in your church and your worship team in your life, know Matthew 5 verse 8 that says the pure in heart shall see God. Mm. Great, Charlene. A very important point to raise. And... Um you also touched on sexual sin or sin, and I think that's the biggest uh, fire killer. If you talk about how to keep a fire burning, we've got to figure out well, what, what puts a fire out. <laughs> and uh, what are fire putter outers? Christoph or oh, Zach, what, are fi what, what can kill the fire? Anything that takes the place of your joy in God, any kind of counterfeit substitute. So whether it's, yeah especially sexual immorality sexual impurity um there's l the love of the love of anything but god the love of money will quench that fire if you're too concerned with how you know mm. the love of money the love of self you're too concerned with your image too concerned with mm. um you know the love of uh um there was another one i forgot but uh yeah any any anything that that any counterfeit substitute for the love of god I think uh, one of the things that was coming to me is also about, you know, we talk a lot about discipleship. D um, discipleship is not a fire killer, by the way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we, part, no, it will, well, it also helps keep, you know, let's be practical because, you know, we're not always going to be on the mountaintop and our emotions are not always, you know, we can't rely on our emotions to keep us anywhere um, because they're so fragile and so fickle. So, um, you know, discipleship is very, very important. Having people who you're accountable to, who know you, who when anything's going on, they can confront you. What's going on here? I saw this. I saw that. Is there a problem? People who can kind of keep you in check. Um, um, th you know, that's really, really, really helpful. Trying to maintain good relationships, that, that's easier said than done. But, but maybe, you know, you've argued with somebody or you have some kind of disagreement. Well, that's going to kill unforgiveness. That, that's going to that's gonna, that's gonna kill the fire. And, and so there are just many ways of kind of just trying to protect that. And I think having people around you as well that are zealous for God, people around you that love God. Yes, you must go out and yes, you can witness, you must witness and you must spend time also with non-Christian friends, you know, bringing them to the Lord. But spend time with people who 
um, you know, a spiritual people, people who are going to lift you up, people who are going to um, give you an encouraging word, who are going to um, just really help you as yeah. you as you move along. People who are ahead of you spiritually, or, mm-hmm. you know, or above you in, in in a particular way that will really, yeah, help fan the flames. Sorry, Dan. Can I just add that if you are going through a situation and you're in a worship team and you're going through a divorce, you're going through hell some way or other don't ever stop singing don't ever stop ministry um honestly i can tell you that is what keeps you going satan will use the stuff in your life and you can go guys can i just take a few weeks off of the um, worship team uh, i'm going through a very heavy time uh, of course there is there is legitimate reasons i you know um but I, I find that we are very fickle, Rachel. There are many times when little things, when you feel, oh, but I'm, I'm so emotionally down. I'm not going to be worthy to lead the people in worship. That is the time when the Lord can use you. I have been in utter distress because of something that might have happened in my life. And there's no way that I can say, sorry, guys, out of the worship team, we are always ministering and through bad times through hard times keep on keep on in your calling keep on worshiping don't let the devil take uh, that away from you that has been you have been called to that and the more you give out the more you rely on the holy spirit the more you will see that by the end of the day by the end of the service of you leading worship you feel something has happened something has triggered you're healed again through sickness, isn't it? How many times have we been so ill? uh, And you're a Sunday morning. I I had terrible um, uh, food poisoning and where I was shaking one morning, I was extremely ill at a very high temperature. There's no way we could cancel and say, sorry, pastor, Vine Song is not singing today. I did it. I said, Lord, it's for you. It's for nobody else. And I will stand on that stage. And Satan, you will not have your way. Mm. I'm going to worship through this. Mm. So I want to encourage you. that not, Don't even let illness or uh, anything in your life stop that fire burning from worshiping. Mm. Yeah, Because it's, it's, it's in the worship mm. where, as you say, where God can give you the, the breakthrough and the healing and, yeah. the, and, the, and the deliverance. We have a bit of a joke in the ministry because <laughs> whenever each one of us mm. has a headache, or back pain, or or whatever we had, uh, food poisoning, or we've broken something, or something is not good, um, we're going through something, and then we always say that depending on your faith is going to depend on how, on, in which song you're going to get healed, and so we always joke that if you really have strong faith, then normally you get healed and lift up the name, because it's one of the first songs that we're singing, and if you really are low in your faith, and I mean you're really clutching at straws here in your faith, then God will heal you in living water. Then, I mean, then it's like, come on, you know, that you have to wait that, you know, next time, you know, you can be better. I know you can. So, <laughs> so uh, but it's true what you say, not to, not to let, let the fire go out. And just to add, Rachel t- touched on relationships. That's for me a biggie. Um, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's with some relationship issue is, you know, resolve it. Resolve it. Don't bring it. Uh, don't don't take it anywhere. Make sure you resolve. Look after relationships. And the number one relationship is the relationship between you and God. Because if you love Him and you value His relationship, you want to worship Him. Mm-hmm. And so when Charlene talks about purity, you know, that's something, if there's sin or there's something like that, it takes you away from God where you feel, well, I don't want to worship Him because you feel ashamed. Yeah. You know, like Adam in the Garden of Eden, yeah. <laughs> he wanted to make a beeline. He, doesn't want, he didn't want to be in God's presence because he knew... That relationship has been scarred. So just to do whatever you can to quickly restore the relationship as quick as you can. Repent. Just say, Lord, you know. And to, just to emphasize what Charlene's saying too is, you know, the Bible says God's strength is made perfect in my weakness. Even if you feel weak, say, God, I cannot. You know what? Guaranteed. I've heard it many times. Haven't we heard it? When you feel it, your worst. And you feel like, oh, you know, I think it was terrible. Oh, I, th- I think I sounded awful. Oh, I just didn't feel good. I just didn't feel like worshiping, but you know, I went. How many times have we heard, oh, that was the most anointed service we've been at. Oh, I could just see God shining through you. And you're like, huh? Hey, hey, me? You're not, are you confusing me with the person on the left of me? No, you. Yeah. Uh, isn't that the truth? Yeah. 
so anyway, so we hope that you that there was something from there that you could really uh, be blessed with. And uh, the last question we have is also from Kenya. And it's the question is, how do I know if I am worshipping in spirit and in truth? So that's a good one. So who wants to start? Zach, you look like you're ready. You, you know. <laughs> you just know. <laughs> before, uh, I mean, before the Lord, like, I grew up in the church, but, you know, you go to church, you check in, you check out, you you kind of just go there to get the job done, but you're not worshiping. You're not going there to worship. But once God touches you, touches your life, changes something so deep, so drastic for you, um, then you, you, your, your only response is this gratitude that just boils up from your belly and there's nothing in the world like it. It's, it's absolutely, it's a singularity. There's nothing that can compete with it. There's nothing that can even counterfeit it. You know that you're worshiping or you know that you're not. And there's no, there's no in between when you're in the process of worshiping, you know if you're worshiping or not. And I think it's only something the spirit can reveal. There's no way to, to, to say that this is a definitive, um, this is a mark of worshiping in the spirit and in truth. Mm. But the spirit reveals it. Right for you. Again, I think, um, you know, worshiping in spirit and in truth is not a feeling. Um, are you, do you belong to the Lord? Are you his? Have you surrendered your life to him? Um, when you worship, are you, are you worshiping him? Is your focus on him? Well, you know, you wor are you worshiping in a scriptural way? I mean, you know, you're worshiping in spirit and in truth. It's not about how you feel or, um, you know, I think, you know, as you, you know, grow in your relationship with the Lord, you know, you know the word, you know, you know, you know, you know who God is. You, yeah, I think, you know, there's, it's not about a feeling. It's about, it's about, it's also about faith. It's by faith, you know, it's faith that pleases the Lord. And it's by coming to him in faith, believing that he is, Amen. that he is the rewarder of those that seek him. You are seeking him. And I'm going to worship him. I'm going to ascribe all worthiness, all worth to him. Then you're worshiping in spirit and in truth. Mm. Did you want to add to that? Yeah, I was thinking about this question because I saw it uh, beforehand. And I said, and I've always grappled you know, what is worship uh, in spirit and in truth? What is that? Because God is seeking for that. So, yes. Lord, you I know, I want to be, <laughs> seek me, you know, pick me. I want to be worshiping in spirit <laughs> and in truth. <laughs> and so I, I I, just thought last night that what if I turn it the other way around, worship in the flesh, flesh and in lies, yeah. and, and mm. turn it around that way and say... When I am worshipping, perhaps make a checklist for yourself. Because it is, you can go from spirit and in truth into flesh and lies, you know, depending on where you where you are uh, spiritually, you know. Um, if And the Bible says you will know them by their fruit. Anything that bears great fruit is born of the spirit, What is born of the spirit will end in the spirit. What it st it starts in the flesh will end in the flesh. And um, uh, is it is it uh, Ephesians or Galatians six verse nine? I think um, that says whatever you sow in the spirit, you will reap bountifully. But yeah. when you sow in the flesh, uh, it's death. Um, so if you are going to start seeing the fruit of your worship, then you will know that you are worshiping in spirit and in truth. Yeah. And um, it is it is not a feeling because you you go God is this really moving people right now? Many times when we're in a situation in a country that's probably culturally not extremely vibrant, uh, it, they're not really worshiping with you, isn't it? Mm. They're not lifting their hands. They're not clapping. Uh, yeah, yeah they no outward expression. No outward expression. So you're literally stripped of that. And then you're going, Lord, is this worship that I'm worshiping, is it really touching people? And then only afterwards would they come to our CD table, isn't it? Yeah. And they'll be crying and they'll be saying how amazing it was. So you can never, ever, ever trust people's faces. Mm. Mm. You only trust that the fruit of your worship is going to eventually 
come forth, but it comes by faith first. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so don't worship in flesh yeah. and in lies. Yeah. Um, you know, just worship. Uh, if you feel this is the flesh, uh, the Holy Spirit will show you, oh, yeah. you know, isn't oh, it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can say, Holy Spirit, show me. Show me, yeah. because w when you when you start worshiping in the flesh and you want to perform and you <laughs> want to let people hear your voice, you know, then you know the Holy Spirit will go, just calm down, calm down, uh, just calm it down. Then you go, okay. Uh, sorry, before you say it, yeah. Corrie ten Boom used to say one thing that really stuck with me. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Every time when we sing a song and when I say, Lord, I don't have the words to say. It's not coming out of my spirit right now. I don't feel really holy. I don't feel spiritual right now. I'm reminded by the words by Corrie ten Boom that said, keep it simple, mm -hmm. stupid. Mm -hmm. Just keep it simple. You don't have to say anything. The moment the Holy Spirit comes to you, you, you just say it. Then you keep quiet again. If you don't mm -hmm. hear the Holy Spirit, don't say it. Don't. Say it if you don't feel the Holy Spirit is upon you. Very good advice. Yeah, because um, you can you can worship in in silence in some moments, can't you? Yeah. Mm. Just be quiet before the Lord, and that's ascribing that worthiness, that worth. Right. And it's like at the end of it, it's like, what do you you know? What are you here for? Mm -hmm. What are you really here for? Yeah. Um, is it is it are you are you worshiping God to ha to ask Him for something? Are you worshiping God that you can get something in return? Are you worshiping God because? Um, or are you are you standing on the stage worshiping because you want to be seen and your talents displayed? Like, what are you there for? Mm -hmm. You know, what's your purpose in being there? Are you ascribing worthiness to God, or are you wanting something for yourself? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I think it's a good thing. Is is have you come there, you know, to receive something, or have you have you come there to give? Yeah. Yeah. You know, have you come to give worship to Him, or have I just come to receive yeah. attention or being seen? You know, I think the intention of the heart is so important, yeah. and. Uh, uh, this morning, um, I just have to be obedient just to share this because um, in Amos 5, verse 23, if you want, you can read the, the chapter leading up to it. And it says, Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of your stringed instruments, but let justice run down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. And it says here, unless in the in the in the footnote um, of my Bible, it says, unless the proper relationships are maintained between the worshiper and God, and the worshiper and his neighbor, sacrifices are meaningless. So if you feel like you want to bring this worship to the Lord, you know, He basically saying, hey, I'd rather hear nothing than I would rather hear nothing than than to see you not you know uh, seeking after righteousness. And, and justice and relationships and those things um, are important to the Lord. And if you almost like if you put those things in order and focus on that, then whatever you do is worship unto Him. As Zach said, whether you're listening, whether you're actually singing, whether you're actually being silent, silent whether you're meditating, um, you know, and everything we, everything we do is worship unto the Lord. You know, worship, as we learned, is a lifestyle, mentally, physically, emotionally, yeah. and financially. It's, it's the worship is a lifestyle, so it's almost like first things first, and then the worship kind of comes by itself. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just um, uh, just took me back into the Bible. You know, First Samuel, I think ten uh, t from ten onwards. You know, where Saul was uh, called to be king, and very quickly um, he was called. He was anointed. He was appointed. He was um, tall. He was strong. He looked like the person that should be king. And the, the Israelites have been asking, please, we want a king. And, and Saul became king. And um, the, Saul's downfall was that he was just a people pleaser. Yeah. He, um, Samuel said to him, you know, because he went and he, he, he sacrificed ahead of Samuel. He was supposed to wait for Samuel in a particular place. Samuel was not there at the time when he said he would be there. He panicked because of the people and he um, sacrificed. Um, to God, like like a priest would. And, um, you know, Samuel said to him, you know, does God delight in the smell of your burnt offerings? He, de you know, it's he, he desires obedience rather than sacrifice. And then when you look at David, David sinned and he did so many things, you know, he committed adultery, he murdered, we see all these things, but he was a man 
after God's own heart. Why? Because he was never looking to please people. His, always his focus was to please God, even though he did wrong things, even though he did things um, that were not good and he, you know, he got punished for those things. But his heart was about God. God, how can I please you? How can I honor you? Saul was about how can I please the people and how can I look good in front of the people and so the people can recognize that I'm king. But David was already secure in his kingship. He was secure about that. God has given me this. I know that I'm secure there. I'm secure in who, who I am. So all I need to do is please God. And uh, the two different approaches, the two first kings of Israel, um, worshiping in, you know, different types of worship and the difference between not worshiping in spirit and truth and worshiping in spirit and in truth. Well, at this time, I think, Rachel, thank you for sharing that because I do feel it's also a good time for anyone who's watching and you have been watching and maybe you, something that what we've said and that the Lord has shared through us has really touched your heart. Maybe it was the point where you felt that perhaps your fire has gone out, your worshiper's fire, or perhaps there's something in your life that you want to give to the Lord today and say, Lord, I, want, I don't want anything to stand in my way between me and, and our relationship. And I want that to be true and pure. And out of that purity, I want to worship you. And I want my heart to be at that place to always worship you in spirit and in truth. So I don't know what you're going through, but there's a reason why you're watching us. There's a reason why you have even sat through most of these questions where some of them you thought, well, maybe something's not in it for me. But if you're still watching, I believe there's a plan and, and, and a purpose of it that, that God has allowed you to still look and watch and, and that He wants to touch your life, that He wants to just ignite a fresh fire in your life, a new desire, a new hunger for worship, a new hunger just to worship Him. And it doesn't matter what you've done. Let Him take away that sin, with it, with its sin that's come into your life or with its complacency. And during this time, it could just be a, a feeling that you just feel low in your faith. I just feel complacent. I just feel low. I just don't feel up for it. I don't know what to do because I, do, I just don't feel like worshiping Him. Well, be encouraged today because, you know, the father is standing there with his arms open wide, like that prodigal son, who says, doesn't matter where you've been, it doesn't matter what you've done. He's saying, as long as you return to me. So he's saying, return to me today. My arms are open wide. I want to embrace you. I want to hold you. So make right with him today. If there's sin you need to repent of, do it right now. So wherever you are, just... Enjoy His presence. Just, just open your heart and say, Holy Spirit, I'm available. I'm available for you to do what you want to do. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Take away my ideas of worship and replace it with your own. So just welcome the Holy Spirit. Say you welcome Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, I welcome you into my life. I welcome you to change me. I welcome you to move over my life. Holy Spirit, I need more of you. In these days that we're living in that are so trying, I need to be closer to you than ever before. Holy Spirit, I need a new touch from you. And you know what? Even if you say, I need to sense your presence, do you know what? He will do it for you. He will do it for you. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He'll never take you further than what you want from Him and what you allow Him to say. He knows your heart's desire. Let Him fulfill that desire today. And even if it's, if it's a marriage that's in trouble, even if, it's a, if you're a worshiper and your, your marriage has been in turmoil, you know what? Satan hates the fact that you are a worshiper and that you are in the front lines of worship. Let Him restore that relationship. Let Him restore any relationship, whether it's with your children, whether it's in the worship team, whether it's a relationship between you and the pastor, whether it's any relationship issue, ask him to restore that relationship. After today, make sure that you don't let anything come between you and to give him your best worship that you can possibly give him. So Lord, we thank you now for your presence. We thank you for touching every man, woman, 
child, every family, every person watching, you know what needs to be done. Do it now, we pray in Jesus' name. Even if there's sickness in your body, just put your hand where you need that healing right now. If it's sickness that has stood in your way of worshiping Him, let Him touch that sickness right now. And in Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Let the Lord immediately rectify that situation. Receive that healing right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whether it's mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, sexually, any emotional problem, just a mental thing that you've been going through that you cannot shake. It's sometimes just a small little thing that's keeping you from, from worshiping and, and that takes your joy away from worshiping Him. And right now we're going to sing the song that says, Holy Spirit, move me now. Make my life whole again. So if you feel like something has been taken away from you, let Him make you whole again. Let Him make you whole again. Let Him let Him restore you. Let Him refresh you. Let Him heal you. As we start singing, move over me. Move over me. Holy Spirit, move me now. Sweet. 
healing my mind. Oh, you're making me whole. Move with your spirit. Take away my pain. Help me to see, to see your work. Heal my heart. Restore my dreams, Lord. Lift me up to face life again. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. His hand is upon you. His glory will shine upon you today. Show your majesty, Lord. Bring healing and wholeness again. ministering to us. What can we do without you? What can we do without your presence? Lord, we just worship you. We just give you the praise. We give you the glory. And right now, we just want to thank him. We just want to thank God for for being with us during this time. We want to thank Him for, for what He's done in all our lives, wherever you are. Times might not be easy, but just thank Him for what He's done, how He's looked after us. He said that we will abide under the shadow of His wings. Hasn't He been good to you? Hasn't He been kind to you? We've got food to eat. We've got, we've got a lot to be thankful for. Let's just thank Him for all that He's done, for all that He's doing and all that He's going to do by faith. And the time is lying ahead. Say, Lord, by faith, I thank You and I worship You for what You're going to do in my life, for taking me to that new place of worship. Thank You for healing me. Thank You, Lord, for, for, for taking me to the next level in every area of my life, for looking after me financially, for, for being with my family, Lord. I just thank You for what You're going to do in my life. For changing my heart in some areas my heart is a heart of stone that you can change it to a, a heart of worship that's ready to worship you in spirit and in truth 
So Lord, I just thank you. And Lord, we as a team, as a ministry, we just give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Lord, the glory does not belong to us. It belongs to you. So we just give it right back to you. We just glorify your holy name. Without you, we would not even be here. We would not have air to breathe. You've looked after us. You've protected us. You've kept us. And we give you all the glory. Well, we want to thank you for joining us. And we give God all the praise and glory. May it be well with you during this time. May it be well with your soul. And may the Lord keep the worship strong in your life, that that fire would never be quenched, and that you will just grow strong and mighty as a worshiper in Jesus' name. So we bless you in the name of the Lord from all of us here. God bless you until we see you again. Bye-bye.